Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sam and today we're going over 50 things that I no longer buy or own. So as some of you guys have known, if you've seen some of my other videos over the past couple of years, I have been just trying to seek a more minimal and simple intentional life. Part of that process is getting rid of the excess and working to make room for things that matter to me. And the purpose is definitely not to deprive myself or make things miserable or more difficult, but to be more intentional, resourceful, and creative with the things that I already have. So this list is definitely not to tell you what you can or cannot own. Everyone's life is going to look very different. Everyone's situation is different. Your priorities are different. And so everyone's list is going to look different. This is just my list of some things that have worked for me personally to no longer buy or own. And hopefully it gives you some motivation or inspiration to come up with your own list that's going to work for you. So let's just get right into this list. Number one is clothes I don't love. Over the past couple of years, I've kind of worked to find my own style and figure out the types of clothing and fabrics that I like. So now I kind of know the fits that I like, the materials that I like. So clothes that are uncomfortable, unflattering, a lot of times trendy, I'm kind of basic. I have a, I just kind of have a simple basic style and all the pieces in my closet are pieces that I love, pieces I could wear any given day that are comfortable. If clothes are not comfy, I won't wear them. I have learned about myself. So everything in my closet needs to be something that I feel good in, look good in, and really, really love. Number two, cute exercise clothes. So I don't know if you guys are like me, but I thought if I had cute exercise clothes, it would make me like exercising more. And that was not the case. Like the first time I wore it, I was like, oh, I feel so like cute. Sure, I'm gonna go work out. But it didn't make me like <laughs> exercising or going to the gym anymore. And they're very expensive. And honestly, I found like just the leggings and t-shirts that I have were a lot more comfortable to use for working out or yoga or walks or whatever anyways. And those ended up being the clothes I wore all the time. So yeah, the cute workout clothes were just kind of a waste of money for me. Number three kind of relates to number one, but that's uncomfortable shoes. I'm at an age where I want to be comfortable. I know the types of shoes that I like, the types of shoes that are comfortable. Life is too short to wear uncomfortable shoes. That's all I'll say on that. <laughs> number four is earrings and rings, and also maybe jewelry in general. It just extra jewelry. I haven't worn earrings in years. I had my ears pierced for a little bit, but they were just always like getting infected, causing me issues no matter what types of earrings I wore, how I cleaned them, like anything like that. So I just stopped wearing earrings. It simplified my life so much. I've never been a ring person either. I just have my wedding ring. That's the only ring that I wear. And then I've got like two or three simple necklaces that I love that I've owned forever. And that's it. Those are just the few simple pieces that I love that fit my style that I love to wear every day. And I don't know. I don't really want anything else. Kind of keeping with the clothing trend is special occasion clothing. So things that you would only wear to a wedding or a museum opening or a gala or I don't know, like a super fancy event of some kind. I used to have some like really nice, really beautiful fancy dresses that I wore maybe once. Uh, I would get it for like a special event and then I would never wear it again. Now I've got a couple of dresses that I really love. They can be dressed up or dressed down. I've got this one dress you probably saw it if you saw my closet declutter it's like this floral dress i'm obsessed with that dress i wear it to literally everything that i can uh, so if you ever invite me to a wedding or a bridal shower or a baby shower or any kind of party i will probably be wearing that dress i make i make them work and most of the time if you're going to a fancy event people are focused on someone else besides you like you're going to a wedding they're looking at the people getting married they're not looking at you as the guest so i've just learned people don't really care that much what i wear so I'm happy with what I wear, that's what matters. Purses and wallets. I've got a black purse, a brown purse, a wallet that my husband gave me a couple years ago, and a backpack. That's it. I've had the purses and backpack for, oh my gosh, I don't know, years. The purses are simple, go with all my outfits, and if they wear out, I will replace them in the future, but until then, I don't really want any more. Excess skincare. So yes, I have skincare stuff, but if you've seen some of my other videos, you know I had a huge problem with like hoarding skincare, like collecting it. Honestly, it was like, a, it was like a hobby at one point. Like I had, you know, those under the bed, like big tubs. Like I had two of those filled with skincare and oh man, wasted a lot of time and money. Just had a lot of issues with my skin over the years. I thought every new product I get was going to fix my skin and it didn't. So anyways, I am using up all of the back stock that I have. I probably will not need to purchase any skincare for a long time working through all of that stuff. And then I have just 
the few products that I really like that work for my skin. Um, and when eventually I've used up everything and those run out, I will replace those in the future, but I'm not just gonna keep trying all these other you know products that are trendy or supposedly work. I'm just gonna use what works for my skin and stop collecting all the extra. Loofahs are like bath scrubber thingies. I just, I use a washcloth. My husband does have a loofah. He really, he really likes having one. So he has one, but I just use a washcloth with some soap. Body washes and scrubs, same thing. I just have this like really nice bar soap that I use with a washcloth. If I get like a body scrub or body wash as like a gift or something from my mom or sister or something like that, I will absolutely use it. But I just found I don't really need it and soap and a washcloth works great. Shaving cream, again, I just use soap. Blush, eyeshadow, primer, setting spray, eyeliner. I am not really good at doing <laughs> makeup. Um, I honestly, I don't like wearing makeup that much. I'm trying to just really embrace my skin. I've got a little bit of mascara, a couple of things that I'll wear as like a little bit of light foundation sometimes, a brush blonzer thingy um, that honestly I don't use because in case you can't tell, my face already uh, is very rosy and red naturally. And so usually I don't need any more redness going on on my face. So I like to keep my makeup super simple. Uh, haircuts, I've actually been cutting my own hair for the past, I think it's been like a little over a year now. No one has said anything and except for the one phase where I went through where I tried to do the butterfly haircut on myself, that was, that was not good. I just basically wore my hair up for like months until it grew out. Other than that, it has gone pretty well. And yeah, if you just have a good pair of scissors, watch a couple of YouTube tutorials, pretty easy to do it yourself. And kind of in line with that is hair dye, highlights, hair coloring. So I used to get highlights pretty regularly. Right now I'm trying to just kind of let it grow out and see if I'm okay with embracing the darker color. I did like being a little more blonde, so I don't know, <laughs> we'll see how long this lasts, but for now, um, I am not doing any more highlighting, hair coloring, it's been, about a year, I think. So I'm gonna try it for probably the rest of this year and see if I can hold out long-term and embrace the more, I don't know, whatever this brown maybe, more brown color. Any nail polish supplies or like going and getting manicures or anything like that. My nails are super plain. They're very simple. Oh, it's not focusing. Honestly, just kind of like having them simple and also nobody cares if I don't have my nails painted, so. When we're talking about appointment related stuff, um, like brow, lash, facials, any of those other appointments, I don't get my brows done. And I'll just pluck the occasional stray hair. Thanks to high school Sam, who like plucked her eyebrows within an inch of her life. I now have very sparse eyebrows. So I don't really have a need to go get them touch up or anything like that, just because they're kind of thin to begin with and I'm working with what I got. I don't get my, like I don't get fake lashes. I don't get lash curls or lash tints. I just use a little bit of mascara every now and then if I want. Probably should have started the video with this, but like quick lighting disclaimer. Sorry for the lighting. If you see my other videos, you know we live in a basement level apartment. And so these are the only windows. They look at a cement wall and uh, we don't get a whole lot of natural light. This is the brightest part of the day right now. This is as bright as it gets. So I have my little ring light attempting to give a little more light, but I know the lighting is not ideal. So we're just gonna work with it. Multiple accessories. So I've just got one beanie, one scarf, one pair of gloves, one pair of sunglasses, one belt. Having one of each just makes it really easy to store and stay organized, but it's also really easy to keep track. I only have one of each of those things. They each have a spot that they go. I know where they're at at all times, so I'm not worried about constantly losing them. Excess hair tools and products. So I don't have a bunch of different hair styling tools. I have like my one, what is it? It's not a curling iron, the wand thing that you wrap your hair around. I honestly don't use it that much. My husband and I are like doing date night or we have a cool event to go to or if I'm trying to look presentable and like I can put myself together for YouTube videos like this, I will curl my hair and try to use it a little bit. Other than that, it's pretty simple hairstyles. I just have a couple scrunchies and claw clips that I use. I've used a bunch of different hair oils and serums and all that stuff in the past, but I found just keeping it simple usually works best for my hair. So I've just got this little bottle of argan oil. I'll do, you know, one pump of that and rub that on the ends of my hair once or twice a week and that's all it needs. Uh, music, I don't pay for Apple Music or downloading songs or anything like that. I'm still on the family plan <laughs> with my family for Spotify. If they ever do kick me off the family plan, I will go ahead and probably pay for Spotify, maybe in the future. There's also all the free music and stuff on YouTube. So I don't know, currently I don't 
don't pay for or spend any money on music books. I haven't paid for books in probably over a year. I just rent stuff from the library. I love going to the library. They've got just about every book I have ever wanted. And I love audiobooks. I do listen to audiobooks just as much, if not more than actually reading physical books. So when it comes to audiobooks, again, I just use the free Libby app, which links to your library and you can get unlimited free audiobooks through the Libby app. So I do that too. Streaming subscriptions. Our phone plan has a couple included. I think Netflix and Hulu are like free um, as part of our phone plan. We've got a couple friends and family who have let us logged into like other random, there's so many, every station has their own like streaming service now. So there's like 10,000 of them. So a couple of our friends and family have given us their logins. If there's, you know, a show or movie on one of the other platforms that we really, really want to watch. Um, but other than that, we don't pay for any streaming subscriptions. We don't watch a whole ton of TV in the first place. Honestly, we watch YouTube more than anything and that's free too. An extra set of bedding or sheets. So we used to have multiple pairs of sheets and bedding, but I found that I can get all of the bedding done in the laundry in a few hours during the day. So I'll usually just pick one day of the week, get it all done and then put it back on the bed. That works for us. Specialty kitchen tools. So like a pizza cutter or an avocado like slicery thingy or an apple core or an ice cream scoop. Instead of an ice cream scoop, we just use a spoon or most of the time, most of the cool fancy kitchen tools, you can just use a knife. And kind of in line with that would be specialty kitchen appliances or kind of single use appliances. So things like a bread maker or a rice cooker, an Instapot, Instant Pot, Insta or Instant Pot. I'm not sure which it is, but we don't have it. <laughs> like one of those on the counter ice machine, pebble ice machine makers. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I would really love one of those, but the ice that our freezer makes is totally fine. There's just things that we don't really use. So one of the many perks of having an amazing chef as a husband is he knows how to make bread and rice and anything else those appliances make. He just can make it with the few simple things that we have in our kitchen. He's teaching me to attempt to make it as well. My rice and bread is not that great, but it will become so hopefully eventually. <laughs> and so thanks to him, we're really able to just use the things that we already have to make any meals or types of food that we need. Next would be a coffee maker or coffee making accessories. Yes, I do drink coffee occasionally, but I don't drink that much of it. I'll have coffee maybe well, once or twice a week. I just use instant coffee. And I know some people probably are like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm not a fancy coffee person. You could line up 10 different types of coffee from different places. I could not tell you the difference between any of them. It all kind of tastes the same to me. Honestly, I don't love the taste of coffee. I like the creamer and the flavoring that goes in it, but it just makes things a lot more simple. I don't need the coffee maker, the filter, the pods, the espresso machine or cups or coffee grinders or I don't know, all that extra, all that extra stuff. I know this is not for everyone. I come from like a very coffee centric family. My parents love making coffee. My siblings love making coffee. They have all the cool machines and gadgets and stuff like that. And the coffee they make tastes amazing. Um, but for me, again, I just, I don't really taste the difference. And so I'm happy with my just simple instant coffee. It is a little bit of a janky setup for coffee. My family all thinks I'm weird, but it works for me. Water bottles. I just have a reusable water bottle. I fill it up, take it with me everywhere I go. So I don't need to buy the plastic disposable kind. I just keep reusing the one I have. Unnecessary supplements. So I don't know about you guys, but I, <laughs> uh, I used to buy like just any of the supplements, powders, vitamins, like whatever I saw other um, influencers or friends and family, you know, buying, using, taking, I would just buy that and take it as well. And so there was just a lot of money <laughs> wasted on all these different supplements, but also I've just spent the past year kind of trying to learn more about my specific body, my health, my hormones, what my body needs. So the past year I've just focused on nourishing my body with food, eating mostly healthy, and then working with a doctor, definitely work with a doctor, and just getting those one or two things that your body needs instead of like, all of the pre-workout and post-workout and vitamins, all of the things. So I've just pared it down to just a couple of things that my body needs. And then the rest of it is just 
nourishing through good food, impulse purchases. So if you guys have seen a couple of my other videos, I'm doing a no buy year challenge this year for 2024. And a huge part of that has been my relationship with finances and spending and money. Uh, and so part of what I'm doing this year is if there is anything that I think I need or want, I'm waiting at least 24 hours, ideally a week or longer before doing those impulse purchases. I'll just put it on a list on my phone um, or like on an Amazon wish list, and then just walk away and revisit it in like a day, a few days, a week, and see if I actually still really need or want that item. Cheap alternatives. I have learned the hard way that buying the cheaper option a lot of times is a waste of money. A couple years ago, my husband and I bought this really cheap couch just because I really wanted a couch. Couldn't afford a, like a really nice, fancy, good quality one, and so I just went ahead and Impulse bought the first cheap couch I could find. It was horrible, it was super uncomfortable, it kind of fell apart and we didn't even use it after the first couple of days. So we had a couch sitting in our living room for like two years that we didn't even use. It was so dumb. Like I still kick myself thinking about that stupid couch. Another example is we recently moved from Phoenix, Arizona here to Washington, DC. The East Coast is very cold. This is very different weather than what we were used to. And so I bought a cheap coat and some cheap shoes and, and it did not keep me warm. They were garbage. So I've learned it's worth it to save up and to take your time to get the higher quality items that are gonna last a long time and actually be worth that money. Tupperware. I haven't bought Tupperware in probably two years. Two years ago, I invested in a really nice set of the like glass containers with lids. We use them for everything. They last, they're really great. You can throw them in the microwave, throw them in the dishwasher, like do whatever you need and they hold up really well. Decorative pillows. Everything in my home needs to be comfy and be something that I want to use. I found a lot of times decorative pillows are not super comfortable and we also currently don't have a couch right now. Eventually someday, I would love for the couch to go here. When we do get a couch, we're gonna get a couple comfy pillows hopefully for it, but not just like decorative ones that are like cute or have sayings on them. On our bed, we just have pillows that we use. Personally, I like things to look a little bit more clean and simple. Multiple phone cases. I just have the one case for my phone and until it falls apart, then I'm just gonna keep using that one. Apple Watch. I have never owned an Apple Watch. I have no desire to have an Apple Watch. I have my phone, my laptop. That is more than enough tech for me. Honestly, I'm working on trying to be less connected to my technology, be less reachable. And I just feel like an Apple watch would just make me feel like I was plugged in even more and constantly be going off with like, I don't know, notifications that I would like want to look at and feel distracted by. And I don't know, I'm trying to simplify and pull away from my technology more, not get more plugged in. Gym membership. So I had one several years ago, but in the past couple of years, I've just really focused on walking, doing workouts at home. There are so many amazing free workouts on YouTube. And so I've just got a yoga mat and I'll do some like stretching, gentle yoga or Pilates at home and just a bunch of walking and that works for me. Uh, meal delivery services like Uber Eats or Grubhub or DoorDash, like anything like that. It's really expensive, it adds up quick. So for the most part, we just do our own cooking at home. But when we do wanna get meals, we either go there or pick it up ourselves. Subscription boxes. So I used to do subscription boxes. I did meal subscription boxes, learned how to plan better and do uh, meal planning and meal prep and just kind of plan ahead for the week that helped a lot. So that works way better and saved us a lot of money. We also were those people who had a subscription box for our dog. Our Corgi Bruce is very spoiled and we used to pay to get him the Bark Box subscription. Like every month they would send him a bunch of toys and treats and chewy things. And most of the times he wouldn't play with the toys and didn't even end up liking the treats. So that was just, that was kind of a waste. So that is something we don't do anymore. Holiday decor. I haven't bought new holiday decor in quite a few years. We only have one tub that stores all our decor for all holidays. So it really limits the amount of things that we can have. It's mostly just Christmas and a little bit of fall. I don't really decorate for other holidays. Other than that, we try to keep it pretty simple. One kind of caveat to this is my husband and I do buy ornaments when we travel. Rather than getting souvenirs and stuff like that when we travel, we buy Christmas ornaments from each of the places that we travel around the world. And so we get to bring those back with us, uh, add those to the tree every year. So that's kind of like one caveat, but other than getting the ornaments, on our travels, we don't really add to our holiday decor each year. DIY and craft supplies. So I used to be like super into scrapbooking 
back in the day, like five years ago. I had a Cricut, I had all the scrapbooking like materials that like took, it took up an entire closet. I also like thought I was gonna be a DIYer and like redo furniture and do all this DIY projects in her home. And so I would like collect all the tools and supplies for that. And then I just never did. I kind of stopped enjoying scrapbooking. So I haven't really done crafts or DIY things for several years, not buying and trying to find places for all the supplies has really helped simplify things. Non-essential furniture. Everything in our home needs to have a purpose. Uh, we have a small apartment, there's not a ton of extra space. And so I'm trying to be really intentional about any of the furniture or pieces that we bring in here. It's something that needs to have a purpose that we're gonna use. I don't wanna buy things just to fill a space. Dryer sheets, fabric softener, and scent beads. I just use the wool dryer balls. I've had a set that I've used for like two years now. I use a little bit of just vinegar as fabric softener. I'll add that to the laundry, it works great. I've just stopped using scent beads. It's got a lot of not great ingredients in it. Our clothes smell fine. They may not smell like fresh spring rain blossom or whatever, but they smell clean and they're good. Cleaning products for every single surface and purpose. I've really pared down the amount of cleaning products that I have. I just have a few. They're very simple. They're very versatile. You can use them for a lot of different things. I don't think we actually need that many type of cleaning products. I think a lot of it is just marketing. So I'm trying to be really simple and intentional and just use what I have. Extra glassware, things like vases or jars or cups or things like that. I usually will just keep any of the jars or glass containers that we get from, you know, trips to Costco or the store or anything like that. When they're empty, I'll clean them out, take off the label, and then I can just reuse them to use as vases, jars, or store anything that we need. Extra dishes or hosting items. It's just my husband and I, we don't need a whole ton of dishes. We do have people over and cook for our friends and family a lot, which is really fun, but we always just find a way to make it work with what we have. Um, sometimes if we need extra dishes or something, we'll have people bring some over, but a lot of the time just using the few simple pieces we have works really well. A broom. I haven't had a broom for years. I just use the vacuum. I think it works better anyways. Journals, calendars, planners, notebooks. I've tried journaling. I've tried doing bullet journals and stuff and it just, I wasn't really into it. it. Didn't work super great for me. And when it comes to like calendars and planners and stuff like that, I really prefer having it all like on my computer and phone just so everything syncs. It's really easy to look things up, to change things, update things, check my schedule and planner and everything like that. So I just do that all digitally. New tech. So I have my laptop that I've had for like four years. I did recently replace my phone last year because before that it was an iPhone 6. I think that was just like struggling to even function day to day. So I did upgrade my phone, but my phone and laptop work great. I don't feel the need to upgrade them or constantly get the newer, better thing. They work great. And when they do eventually die someday, I will replace them. Pet toys. So like I talked about with the subscription box, our little Corgi Bruce, he has a whole bunch of toys. We haven't bought him new toys in probably a year. A lot of our friends and family are also obsessed with him and think he's very cute and they will buy him toys sometimes. But honestly, like a water bottle or a box or just random socks. I don't, he like plays with everything. There's a couple toys that he does play with, but most of the time he just plays with a bunch of random stuff around the home. Knickknacks or just like excessive decor. We don't have a ton of decor or like little knickknacks in our home. We do have a couple of things that are really meaningful, um, have a lot of great memories behind it or are very intentional. But for the most part, we don't just have a bunch of extra decor and stuff sitting around on the walls or shelves or anything like that room sprays or air fresheners. Number one, there's not a lot of great ingredients in those. I usually just make my own. I have a little spray bottle from a room spray I had years ago. I just refill it with some water and a little essential oils and just use that if I ever want the room to smell better. Or I'll just use a candle. Plants. Okay, this one is really, this one has been very challenging for me. So when we lived in Phoenix before we moved here, I had a whole bunch of like over 50 plants. When we made the move here to the East Coast, we only had one small moving pod and anything that was gonna come in the move had to fit in that pod. So uh, number one, there was not room for the plants. But number two, that thing was just gonna be on the road for like two weeks and the plants probably wouldn't have made it. And so before we made the move, all my real plants, I sold or gave away to friends and family. And so the couple plants that I do have now in our home are fake. And someday I would love to have real plants in the home again. We don't really get much sunlight. Also I'm doing the no by year and stuff. Plants are on hold for now. 
but next year maybe hopefully I can get a, a couple real ones we'll see and lastly a desk so when we moved here from Arizona the desk did not fit and so it did not come with us so I have honestly just been using the dining room table I've learned that working from my bed does not work out great I usually end up just taking a nap so <laughs> I've just set up every day at the dining room table. It works really well. It kept me productive and I don't have the need to get a separate desk. Okay, there you go. Thank you so much. If you actually made it to the end, that is a list of the 50 things I do not buy our own. Hopefully it gave you some ideas or inspiration. I'd love to know if you have your own list of things that you don't own, don't buy it. Let me know what they are. If you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, whatever you wanna let me know, definitely reach out in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much for all the amazing support and encouragement. It's been so cool to see this channel grow as we've been starting it this year. And I'm super excited to see what the rest of 2024 has in store. So feel free to give the video uh, a like or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.